So I'm uh, good morning. I'm Nicholas Tomatos. I'm a, a, a student and um, a tutor in the uh, School of Philosophy and Economic Science. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, Viktor Frankl. Um, now, uh, Viktor Frankl's life spanned almost the entirety of the 20th century, uh, during which he developed a philosophy through his search for meaning. This derived from his thoughts and experiences, but corroborates the thinking of a variety of different philosophies, as well as Judaism and Christianity. An academic from his school days, he was born into an Austrian Jewish family uh, and uh, uh, began a serious research into psychology in the 1920s. He, uh, he was in communication with Sigmund Freud and uh, was a student of Alfred Adler, but departed in his thinking from both. Life, he said, is not primarily a quest for pleasure, as Freud believed, or a quest for power, as Alfred Adler taught, but a quest for meaning. In parallel with his academic research, he was studying medicine at the University of Vienna and became concerned at the high proportion of teenage suicides uh, when the end of year reports came out. He organized youth counseling centers, staffed them with eminent psychologists amongst his friends and colleagues, and opened them to students free of charge. He negotiated funding from the Vienna City Council. It is said that in 1931, there was not a single student suicide in Vienna. In the 1930s, he had the following responsibilities. The treatment of suicidal women at the Steinhoff Psychiatric Hospital. The setting up of a practice to treat patients in spite of the Nazi annexation of Austria in 1938, which curbed the working practices of Jews. As head of neurology at the Rothschild Hospital in Vienna, he helped numerous patients avoid the Nazi euthanasia program targeting uh, the mentally disabled. Uh, and uh, just to show you, there's, there are his parents. Um, and uh, in 1941, he married Tilly Grossa. She became pregnant, but she was forced to abort the baby by the Nazis. Um, his entire family was then moved to uh, Theresienstadt uh, a concentration camp where his um, father died of starvation. In the next three years, his family were moved to three other concentration camps, including uh, Auschwitz, uh, uh, and um, Bergen-Belsen, uh, actually Auschwitz, where his, his uh, mother and brother were murdered in the gas chambers, and Bergen-Belsen, uh, where he had an extraordinary experience. Um, in the, in the, his autobiography, Man's Search for Meaning, he recounts an occasion where he was in a, a, an early mo morning working party uh, when it was freezing morning, and uh, I'm going to quote here. Hiding his mouth behind his upturned collar, the man next to me whispered suddenly, if our wives could see us now, I hope they're better off and don't know what is happening to us. He then goes on to describe how he thought of his own wife and saw her image in outstanding clarity, even when the, even, greater even than the images surrounding him. Even when a man stumbled and was mercilessly whipped, he was able to cling to his wife's image and actually communicate with her. This led him to, as he put it, the truth that love is the ultimate and highest goal to which man can aspire. That the salvation of man is through love and in love. He says he didn't at that moment know if Tilly were alive or dead, but that in that moment it had ceased to matter. As it turned out, it was around that time that Tilly died of typhus in the uh, women's part of the camp. Now, um, after the war, uh, Frankel returned um, to uh, 
exploring the link. Uh, well, he returned to psycho psychiatry, psychology, the study of psychology, uh, and explored the link between psychology and religion. His PhD dissertation was called The Unconscious God and advocates the use of Socratic dialogue, otherwise known as self-discovery discourse, as a means of getting in touch with one's spiritual unconscious. Just before this, he married, uh, he married uh, Ellie Schwind as a practicing Catholic. He himself continued to practice Judaism and both celebrated their religions equally together in their uh, attendances, feast days, and prayers. So I'm going to come to a quote now, which uh, I'll put in the chat. Um, if I can just go down to the bottom. Here we are. Well, hopefully you can see that. Everything can be taken from man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way. Well, um, this is, uh, this is a, a, a marvellous quotation. Um, I remember a talk given by um, Ron Leeton, who is also uh, an Auschwitz survivor. Uh, he was in there when he was a child, and uh, he describes how he you know, in, in amongst all these horrors around him, he was able to, to look up at the sky, see the blue sky and the tops of the mountains around. And uh, it would take him out of the, out of the horrific uh, conditions around him. Um, and he says it, it, it saved his life. He claims it saved his life. And um, Viktor Frankl was, was the same. Um, he, in, you know, all he had to do to, to uh, um, remove himself from the, the horrific situation around him was to think of his wife and that he had other uh, ways of, uh, uh, by psych, um, positive psychology of um, uh, getting through that experience. He was, he came under a lot of criticism because his, his book, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, was a bestseller. Um, people said, uh, oh, he was belittle, belittling the experience, but he lived it. Um, they, they said he was, uh, it was only for self-aggrandizement. But he was, only, he was actually only following um, what Epictetus uh, said uh, nearly 2,000 years before him. Epictetus, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here, Epictetus said, so I'm, I'm going to my execution. Do I have to go bawling and crying? Um, Frankl went a bit further than Epictetus, though, uh, in his uh, realization that, that love was the salvation of man. Um, here are, are a few more um, uh, examples closer to our own time. The Duc de Lotzin during the French Revolution uh, apparently, was, uh, was when the executioner came to fetch him from his cell. Um, he was he was uh, drinking wine and uh, and eating oysters, and um, he said to the executioner, "Allow me to finish, citizen, and take a glass of this wine. In your profession, you must need courage." Uh, Sir Thomas More ascending the scaffold uh, in in good humour for his execution had the executioner wait while he removed to clear his beard, saying that uh, it, it had not committed any treason. So um, actually there's, a, there's, the, there's a, another uh, example during the Second World War, uh, when a, a, an account given by an SAS soldier um, <coughs> in Italy, um, he was waiting to load onto with troop, other troops to get onto a, an army lorry. And he noticed a family of four uh, in a doorway um, a, of mother, father, uh, a, a girl in her early teens and a young boy. And uh, the lorry took a direct hit from a, a mortar uh, in the hills. And um, he, he was survived and he looked over to the doorway. The mother and father were dead. 
the little boy was running around screaming, disemboweled, and he, he had to shoot the boy and he looked but uh, you know out of mercy and he looked around for the girl and he saw her tending to um injured soldiers lying around so what are the practical ramifications of this today what what's it what, there, there, it's just to have a positive strategy for every situation um if i know i'm running late uh, i'm going to be late um what I do is I say, I look at my watch and I say, well, I'm not late yet. And somehow that changes the whole mindset so that by the time I do arrive late, I'm in a comparatively calm frame of mind. Um, it, uh, but actually it also helps to, um, to, to consider the other person in a bad situation. So if ever I have to make a complaint on the phone or actually in person, um, I always find myself saying, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, know it's, I know it's not your fault, you're only doing your job, um, uh, but uh, maybe you can pass this on. So um, uh, try that as a strategy. If you're in a bad situation, um, think positively and, uh, and just think of other people perhaps uh, it takes takes the, takes the focus away from from uh, yourself so if you've enjoyed this um, please like it and share it um, and uh, philosophy live will be uh, with you uh, this time next week have a very good morning uh, good day uh, and uh, good luck